Hello my friends, this is Carrie, and welcome to my first video of 2019. It is New Year's Day as I'm recording this, so Happy New Year! Today I'm working on an Ever After High doll and making her to look like Buffy the Vampire Slayer for a commission. And in this video I'll be showing some of the costume construction, the face up, and how I styled the hair. So here I'm working on a pair of pants I made out of some vinyl. And I'm just, I showed you how I cut out from the vinyl the shapes and sewed them together. And there I'm just turning it inside out. And I ended up doing a little bit more tailoring to, they were a little puffy in the front, so I went back and, and did a little bit more tailoring. But overall, I liked how they turned out. And I also added a little button in the front. So now I'm working on the little top with a uh, sleeveless top. And I'm making it so it will be able to be buttoned in the back so it can come on and off. I like to make all my clothes removable. And I didn't use a pattern, but I decided this year I'm going to make things a little bit more easy on myself. So I did use this and, and draw a pattern. So I'll be using patterns going forward, I think. So I'm using this fabric tape to hem the collar area and the bottom part of the dress or the top makes things a lot easier because I like to hand stitch everything the fa the this makes it a cleaner edge so you don't see those stitches and so I'm just measuring the back and pinning where I want to sew it up and then I'm using my flat iron to give it a little bit of ironing. And then I'll add a snap to the back. So I hope you guys are enjoying some of this extra content where I'm showing the construction of the costumes and some of the hair. So let me know what kinds of things you would like me to work on in 2019. Is there anything I'm not showing you that you want to see? Let me know in the comment section. So here I'm going in with the face up after four coats of Mr. Super Clear Flat UV Cut. I shape the eyes. And the supplies that I use are in the description box below along with affiliate links. And thank you so much for those who are clicking those links and making purchases. I really appreciate that support. If you click on the links below to do your shopping, they give we do get a small percentage of the purchase. So that's a great help to me and my channel. You don't even have to purchase what you click on for it to help us. So the affiliate links are in the description box below. So I'm down to the very bottom of my Faber-Castell Aqua Grip pencils, which I, I have a black and a brown that I use so much. And I think I'm down to the very bit that I'm not able to sharpen them anymore and I need to get to a store to get some more of those because those are my favorite for doing sharp lines. They keep a really nice point. So I definitely need to pick up. I really only use the brown and the black. Like a dark, it's a dark brown that I use to detail out the waterline and the black for like eyelashes. And it's just so important for those really sharp points for the lines, for those particular lines. So I definitely need to get out and get some more. So I recommend those in particular. So I'm using a vintage Derwent watercolor pencil there. Some of the older ones did keep a sharper point. Uh, they're just not as hard of a lead as that Faber-Castell Aqua Grip. I'm just using a flat brush to do some shading and then this is a round brush that I've cut down uh, to 
do like sort of a stencil like make it into a stencil like brush so I can do some shading with that as well this is my new favorite blush brush it's just like a highlighter eyelash or eyeshadow brush that I got at the Dollar Tree it's just got super soft bristles so it helps me add on that blush without going overboard and when I do go overboard, I use my colorless blender to blend it out and it helps a lot. So this character is uh, acted by Sarah Michelle Gellar in the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And she's got a very distinct nose. So I'm trying with my uh, white pencil and some shading to make that nose give that nose some of the character that she has in it I'm using this Faber-Castell watercolor pencil it's not the aqua grip but it's Faber-Castell I'm using that pink for the lips to give her a natural look and then I'm using some a crimson Lake Derwent watercolor pencil for some of the darker areas and lines. Gosh, I'm really getting my face in the camera there. I'm sorry. <laughs> try to work my camera angles a little bit better I did get a new camera so we'll be using that in the videos going forward this one kind of clunked out on me so I'll be using a new camera in the next couple of videos hopefully that works just as well and I'm really liking how these lips are turning out it's like a nice natural color that pink Faber-Castell really helped so I always, always shade the ears and I also do body blushing and shading uh, in some of my previous videos I have I think I actually have a video on body blushing if I do I'll put that in an eye card if you have a chance you may want to check out my playlists as well we have them sorted as far as tutorials and full process videos so if you're trying to learn there's some good stuff in there for you to check out So I'm using my favorite flat brush here that I use for shading the, giving like a smoky eye look. And just darkening up the corners. Using these little micro brushes to do some blending. I like to, it's very easy to go overboard when you're trying to give a smoky eye to these dolls. They're so tiny, so I don't want to spread that black out too much so I just try to keep it contained and use that little brush to blend it. So I'm giving her some green eyes and blending those out with some white and then I went in with probably about five colors of green and just kind of keeping it dark around the edges and blending it into the center. I've changed my eye technique up a little bit. I may go back a little on some of them to my old technique, but this one, I, or the previous one, I used to keep the eyes darker on top and then just sh blend it down to the bottom, but now I'm kind of doing a dark circle around the out outer edge and blending it towards the center. Just kind of trying to make it look a little more realistic, I guess. So I hope you guys will stay tuned because uh, at the end of this video, I'm showing a little bit more about how I put together her hairstyle 
And then I also hope that you'll stay tuned to future videos because I have some super fun characters and original ideas planned for this year. I'll also have some spooky and monster characters coming up because I'm doing the going to be attending the Mad Monster Party in Charlotte, North Carolina in February. So let me know if you guys have any ideas for monsters or horror characters. I'd love your ideas on what I could do for that. So I'm using a little bit of black to darken up the outer edges and for the pupil. Now I'm giving her some highlighter. She's in a lot of the reference photos she had a lot of uh, highlighted features and so I added some white to highlight her cheekbones and her forehead and now I'm just going back in and adding some more detail to those eyes. And just I feel like the more detail the more time I spend on them the better they look so I will spend a lot of time on those eyes. Now measuring out where I'm going to put the eyebrows. I feel like one of my I, I feel like this year I've gotten a little bit better with eyebrows. My it was one of my goals to kind of improve and focus on that part of the face ups. So I don't know if this one may turn out bad. I can't, I can't remember how, how I did with these, but I just have always struggled in the past with eyebrows. So I was really trying to work hard on improving how they look. Making sure that they're even and trying to make them the same size and shape and making them kind of slant at the same angle is very challenging. So their start and stop points were a little off, so I was kind of making some adjustments there. Going back to that smoky eye and making sure that she's got plenty of shading around the upper lid. And then I, after I was happy with those lashes, I added some gloss to the eyes and lips and gave her some false eyelashes, the ball jointed doll eyelashes. So her hair was rooted with some soft alpaca. I added a couple of highlights later and then went back with some pastel at her root to give her some, some dark shading at the root. And then I just pin back the side with some, with a little pin, like one of those tiny little barrettes. So here I'm putting her together and that's the final look. So if you like this video, I would love it so much if you gave it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and my videos to be seen. I also appreciate the support of you guys subscribing and commenting. You guys have been so super sweet in all of your comments and I appreciate all of your nice words so very much. Once again, I wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you so much. Bye.